We're going to solve the linear programming problem using method of corners. So we're going to maximize p equals 3x plus 4y. And subject to 5x plus 5y less than or equal to 35, 8x plus 4y less than or equal to 48, 2x plus 6y less than or equal to 30, x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to 0. Remember that this is called your objective function. These are the constraints. And let's talk especially about these two constraints. We see here that x is greater than or equal to 0, y is greater than or equal to 0. We classify numbers three ways according to sign, positive, 0, and negative. So x can be 0 or positive, y can be 0 or positive. So we're really throwing out the negatives. Right? x and y are both, we say the phrase, non-negative. What this really means is if you were looking at your solution set, we can only look at places where both x and y are non-negative. So we are looking in quadrant one. Okay, so our answer will be somewhere in quadrant one when we do this. So we're going to graph the solution set. The fastest way to do this is to find our intercepts. So if you have 5x plus 5y equals 35, you're going to think about graphing the line. Let's first find the x-intercept. When you're looking for an x-intercept, you set y equal to 0, so cover it up. Pretend it's gone. Not even there. So x is 7 when y is 0. Let's do the same thing for the um, y-intercept. For the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So if x is 0, we see 5y equals 35. So y would be 7. Let's keep going. We have 8x plus 4y. We're going to write it with an equal sign. Equals 48. We're going to find our intercepts. So if we set x equal to 0, cover it up, it's gone. We are solving 4y equal 48. So if x is 0, y is 12. So that's the y-intercept. I did it in the other order, but it's fine. You get the same answer. So now we're going to cover up y. We're going to set y equal to 0. So when y is 0, we are solving 8x equals 48. So 8x equals 48 means x is 6. Now we're going to do the last one. 2x plus 6y equals 30. Okay, we're going to set x equal to 0. We're going to solve for the y-intercept. When x is 0, we see 6y is 30, so y is 5. Now we're going to set y equal to 0, so cover it up with your finger. It's like it's gone. When y is 0, that piece is missing, so we have 2x equals 30, so x is 15. So now we're going to graph this. Notice when you're doing this that we're never going to have to worry about graphing x equals 0, y equals 0 explicitly, because these are the axes. So we are going to look at these. Um, it might be nice to count by twos. I know that not everything here is even, but the tick marks, if they count by twos, in between every even number is an odd number, so we're good. So I'm going to focus on quadrant one, because this tells me my answer will be in quadrant one, and I'm going to plot by tick marks by twos. So now we're going to plot each of the points. So for 5x plus 5y equals 35, we're going to plot 7, 0, and 0, 7. So 7, 0. We have 6 and 8 right here. We know 7 is exactly halfway between them. And 0, 7, again, we're going to plot like this. My picture isn't quite to scale, but you get the idea. Notice this inequality right here has an equal sign. So we're going to use a solid line. And we label our line. 5x plus 5y equals 35. We use an equals because we're labeling the line. We will get to the inequality part when we actually do the shading, but for now we're graphing the line. Okay, then we have 8x plus 4y equals 48. We are going to plot 0, 12, and 6, 0, and we are also going to connect this in a straight line because this inequality right here has an equal sign. So we're going to use a solid line. We're going to label it. Let's do the last one. 2x plus 6y equals 30. We're going to plot 0, 5. So 5 is between 4 and 6. And 15, 0. 15 is between 14 and 16. 
We're going to connect that again with a solid line because there is an equal part with our inequality. We label our line. Now we're going to start looking at how we're going to do the shading so we can figure out how to graph the inequalities. So look at the first one. 5x plus 5y equals 35. So that's this line right here. We're going to choose a test point that is not on that line. 0, 0 is not on that line, so that would be convenient to pick. So we're going to do the scratch work over here. 5x plus 5y less than or equal to 35. We're going to use We're going to use the test point of 0, 0. So if we plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, we see that the left-hand side becomes 0. So we have 0 less than or equal to 35. This is a true statement. We always shade the true. So we will shade the side that contains that point 0, 0. So we are going to shade this side that contains 0, 0. So we'd be like shading down like this. Okay. But I'm actually just going to do lines with arrows so you can sort of see because this is going to get really busy when we look at all three of these. But does everybody see that's the way it goes? So something like this. Let's do the next one. 8x plus 4y less than or equal to 48. That is this line right here. As you can see, 0, 0 is not on that line. I can pick any test point that's not on the line. That one's really easy. So I'm going to use 0, 0. If I plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, I see once again that the left-hand side turns into 0. I have 0 less than or equal to 48. This is again a true statement. We shade the true, so we are going to shade the side that has the point 0, 0. So again, I'm shading this way, where it has the point 0, 0. And I'm going to do it in such a way so maybe I can still see my lines and everything. Not too busy. So before we get too excited and do the next one, let's talk about what we have here. If we were just looking at these two lines, we would say, well, what is shaded in both? Well, the stuff that's shaded in both has to be shaded from the purple arrows, 5x plus 5y equal 35 zeros, and from the blue arrows for 8x plus 4y equal 48. So you see that if I extend these blue arrows, I would be shading this section right here. So I'd be using that 5x plus 5y equal 35 line, and then the line switches to the other one right there. So that would be my region if I only had those two lines. Okay, so let's see what happens when we include a third line, and then we look at the last two constraints as well. So the last constraint that is not one of our axes is 2x plus 6y less than or equal to 30. The test point is also 0, 0 because this line right here does not touch 0, 0. So x is 0 and y is 0. We see the left-hand side turns into 0. 0 is less than or equal to 30. Once again, that is a true statement. So we're going to shade the side with 0, 0. So I'm shading this way. And we also have these inequalities here that were restricted to quadrant 1. So let's look at what is shaded if we look at all three pieces and we're only looking in quadrant 1. So if I extend the blue arrows down, none of this we also have a, a purple or a green arrow, so I can't use this section. If I look at this section right here, it has blue and purple, but not all of them. This right here has green, blue, and purple. So, I will have this edge. Now this edge right here is because I have x and y are greater than or equal to zero. I'm going to look at those. Okay, and then you look over here, this little triangle here, the lines start to switch, which one's on top and which one's on bottom. So up to this point right here, we see that the purple and the green have intersected. Now we say, okay, well, which ones, which position do we have all the purple, green, and blue arrows? So we see that the blue arrows are still here, the green arrows are still here, but not there's no purple in this little triangle. So I can't use that. 
So I have to use this piece. Okay, and then we see at this point right here, there's another switch of the lines. From here, we see we only have green arrows on this side. There's no purple, no blue, so I can't use that. I look at this little triangle right here. There's greens and purples, but no blues. This region has green, purple, and blue. So I have to use this. Okay, so that is our feasible region S right here. We see that S is bounded. 